Well, good morning. And hello to everyone at home. And uh, I pray and trust that, uh, that you're all rejoicing in the very fact that irrespective of the reality that we are here in this little bit of a still a lockdown, praise God, but Jesus isn't locked down. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit isn't locked down. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, praise God. And, you know, today I want to encourage your hearts and encourage your lives uh, to actually begin to, to open up our hearts once more because at the end of the day, it's all about this great relationship that we have with God. And no matter where we are and no matter what experience we have had, I believe with all of my heart that we haven't yet got to the totality of all what God is and all that what God wants to do in us and through us and the way he wants to use us to his glory and to his power. Hallelujah. So we're going to be looking a little bit about that uh, today. Uh, one of the great uh, stories, one of the great studies in the Bible is, of course, the study of Israel from its beginning to, to where it is right now until the day when Jesus comes back again. And I'm sure we're all very aware at the moment of the conflict that is going on in Israel at this moment in time. And, and that whole conflict, if you're not too sure about that, uh, can be related right back to, to the time of uh, Ishmael being born, uh, Abraham with Hagar, and of course Isaac being born which of Sarah. The, one was the son of promise and one was the son of of, of, of the flesh, if you put it that way. And of course, I don't know if you know this, but uh, we know that, uh, that through Isaac and Jacob, uh, the 12 sons were born, which became the 12 tribes of Israel. But you may not know this, but Ishmael also had 12 sons, and they became the Palestinian tribes uh, of, of that region at that time. And of course, uh, uh, Ishmael is very strong in regard to the Islamic movement. And uh, the Muslim right, all those people in that, follow that religion, because Ishmael was the firstborn, believed totality that he was to be the son of promise. And they've always seen Israel as those which are taking their rightful place. And so the Bible tells us that between Ishmael and Isaac, there will never ever be peace until Jesus comes back again and that's why we always see this great conflict and this this blew up again around jerusalem because of course uh, through through the muslims and through ishmael they believe that that's the rightful place and i think there was some hostility and the israelites uh, prevented them from doing certain things and of course and the it was always a, always ready to, to to explode and it has but we do pray we do pray because in the midst of all that, there are innocent people, uh, children, families, uh, who are not aware of all what's going on, but are under this time of hostility. So we do pray uh, that God will you know, intervene as he's often done before. Uh, so although we often talk about the peace of Israel, uh, we, we know from the word of God, because of those two beginnings, Ishmael and Isaac, there will never ever be totality of peace. There will always be that hostility. That's just a little bit of, of history just to put you in the picture. If you're wondering what's going on at the moment in time, well that's where it all stems from. Uh, but this morning I want to look at one specific moment in the history of Israel and pray that God will speak to our hearts in that uh, particular lesson for us. Just a brief summary, I'm sure you all know this, but just in case you're listening today and you're not too sure about this, uh, Israel all began right back with, with an, a, a man called Jacob. And God changed his name to Israel. And I want to pick it up from the time when they were in slavery in Egypt at that time. And, and God uh, brought Moses onto the scene. Moses, who had 40 years earlier, had, uh, had actually killed an Egyptian. Uh, he saw the hostility against one of his own people. And from that moment, he was, 
banished, if you like. He, he ran away and he, for 40 years. He was outside of, uh, outside of the people of Israel until God began to draw him back. He saw that fire on the bush burning, which was uh, consumed. And he, God began to speak to him and called him to go back so the people of Israel may be wonderfully set free. And over a long period of time, different plagues, etc. Finally, when they put the blood of the of a lamb over the door, the dwelling house of where the people dwelt, and from that moment they came out of bondage under the blood of the lamb, which was a great prophetic picture of the day-to-day -day salvation given to us in Jesus Christ, that we too come out of bondage, we come out of slavery, we come out of the hostility of the enemy under the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It isn't by works, it isn't by effort, it is by what we can do, it's all by faith in the finished work of Christ. It's by faith in the blood of Jesus that speaks better than the blood of bulls and goats. Hallelujah. The blood of the Lamb of God still speaks today. Hallelujah. And every life that comes to Christ and comes to that finished work of Jesus, say, Jesus, come into my heart, wash me and cleanse me. It is through your sacrifice that I am wonderfully set free. And uh, when the people of Israel came out, uh, they came out with a specific promise that God was going to give them a land a land flowing with milk and honey, hallelujah. And their command was to go in and to possess the land that God had given them. I want to say today that each one of us in Christ, and I pray today that if you're not there yet, if you do not know Jesus as your personal saviour, I, I, if, if nothing else today, my heart would be say to you, don't, don't hesitate. Don't allow the enemy to prevent you to come in to know this wonderful salvation and life that is in Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, I had the wonderful joy of being becoming a Christian about 59 years ago, which was a long time ago, before some of you were even born. And uh, for 59 years, I've known Jesus Christ as my personal saviour. I found the joy of sharing the good news of Jesus for over 50 years. And uh, I'm getting to a stage now when I wake up in the morning and think, oh, what day is it? Uh, where am I supposed to be? But uh, praise God, uh, until the Lord tells me to st stop, then I'll keep sharing Jesus because that's the life. That's what it's all about. And, you know, as much as the children of Israel uh, were encouraged to go in and take what God had given them, God has also, if you're in Christ today, he has given us a possession, hallelujah, to actually claim for ourselves. And when Paul wrote to the church in Ephesus, he said this, we have received every spiritual blessing in Christ. We have, not we're going to, not it is something that God has yet to do. No, in Jesus Christ, we have by faith, received every spiritual blessing. Now, when it says every spiritual blessing, this isn't restricted to just something, praise God, in the work of the Holy Spirit. What it means is simply this, through the spiritual life of God, through the Holy Spirit working on our behalf, we have received every blessing that God wants to give us through the finished work of Christ. Hallelujah. That, that, can, that can be in the, in the natural man, that can be in the physical man, that can be in the spiritual man. Everything pertaining to life itself, God is saying to every single one of us in Christ, I've not only saved you, I've not only redeemed you, I've not only given you a promise of eternal life, but I want you to know this. Through the cross of Jesus, hallelujah, the work of the enemy was defeated. Every work of darkness was overcome. We are a new creation in Christ. Every spiritual blessing, every blessing given to us through the Holy Spirit is ours today in Christ Jesus. And that is something to rejoice in. That is something to, to praise God for. Hallelujah. 
we rejoice in that. We indeed possess every good blessing in God. The limit is only in our inability to claim and receive those gifts for ourselves. Every gift is given, but not every gift is taken. Every gift is given, but not every gift is taken. I was talking to some friends of mine yesterday who are not even Christians, you know, and we've had many, many conversations. And they look at me and sometimes they frown and sometimes they, they question and sometimes they go, Matt, are you, are you on the same planet? I say, well, well in one sense, yes, uh, but in one sense, no. But the interesting thing is, even though they've heard the gospel, they keep coming back and they keep coming back and saying, but what about this? And I keep, and, and I know the Holy Spirit is working and they've only got to take a little step to getting into the full blessings of God or the blessings of God, but it's pride, it's inability, which was just holding them back. And you know, for each one of us, you know, I, I believe with all of my heart that, and we're gonna talk about that, there's so much more yet to actually see and so much more yet to actually claim in the Holy Spirit. Many in the day of Moses, well, nearly all of them actually, who came out of Egypt, never actually entered the promised land. Many of them actually died in the wilderness without really receiving what the promise was. And we haven't got time. But when you actually look at the journey, you can actually see the only thing that held them back ultimately was themselves. That was the only thing that held them back. Somebody said to me, I don't know if it's true, I don't know if it's true, I'm, I, I, I'm not pretty good on these things, but I heard somebody once say that from when they actually left Egypt to going into the promised land, if they went straight in, it was only a matter of a few weeks, the journey itself, 39 days or 40 days. That's all it was. It took 40 years to get there. Well, I suppose that's a lesson for each one of us, isn't it? That the day that we're born again, the day that we are brought into the kingdom of God, we are immediately, hallelujah, in his promises, amen. When I was a little lad, about 12, 13, 13 years old, I decided to join the air training cadets. I thought that was absolutely good fun. Uh, so I went along to the one evening, of, you know, and uh, I smiled because, you know, I look back now and I went along for a little bit of fun, if you follow me, and. I think it must have been like a retired brigadier or something. He called me in. He said, young man, he said, you want to join the air cadets? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, well, he said, we've got some uniforms here. Uh, something is some of the uniform, like a jacket or something. So he said, put that on. He said, and when you go out there, he said, you go on parade. And he said, I learned this. He said, the moment you're on parade, you are representing the chief of Her Majesty's services, which is Queen Elizabeth herself. It is as though Queen Elizabeth is watching you on parade. Don't you ever forget it. And I went, whoa, whoa, okay. And then I went out there and this thought came to me. Some of those people have been in the Air Cadets for many, many years, bigger than I was, older than I was. But when I stood there, one day, I was still in that camp. I was still under the privileges of that organization, even though I'd only come in for one day. Praise God. And if you're a one day old believer, the blessings of God are for you as much as they are for somebody who's been in the kingdom of God the whole of their life. It isn't one of those things whereby you, you, get, you get more blessings the older you get. It isn't one of those things at all. It's one of those things you get more blessings when faith begins to step in and receive them. Hallelujah. But you know, the thing is, there are many in Christ who still die without really ever getting into the fullness of the blessings of what God wants for them. And uh, my heart, it, it's, it's the same over and over and over. Hey guys, 
Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Don't die without getting hold of all that God wants you to be. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ. Well, Joshua finally got them into the promised land. And they had many, many battles when they were there. And uh, many victories, etc. And it wasn't easy just taking that land. It, it, there was a lot of hostility. And when I bring that into today, and into, into the, the modern church, I put it this way, that any Christian church which looks out into the land around them, the community around them, any Christian church which looks out with a, with a heart for the lost, a heart to actually be people brought into the blessings of God, it isn't easy. Satan doesn't like to let go easily. Whenever there's a, a time and a work in the Christian church to go out into the community, there's often hostility. There's often people who will come up against the work of God. You know that, and I know that. And equally, as an individual, as an individual, the moment that you make a decision to say something like, God, I'm going to go for you 150%. I'm going to be, Jesus, everything you want me to be. I'm going to get my life, Lord, which is your purpose and plan, to become the bride of Christ, to be without spot and without blemish. Lord, I'm going to be as holy as I can be holy. Lord, I want to be the representation of Jesus in this world. The moment that you make that choice, isn't it true to say, do you face many, many battles? Isn't that true? You know, the enemy, enemy isn't worried about those who are, who are not interested, those who want to sit back, but he gets worried when you and I begin to begin to be all that Jesus wants us to be. Praise God. I know Marion and I, we've often said that, that when we've been away on mission work at times gone by, that just a few days before we're due to go off and to proclaim, all manner of things kick off. All manner of things take place. The enemy doesn't like you to become all that Jesus wants you to be. Praise God. Because mighty is he in you. Hallelujah. And you can do exceedingly abundantly more in Christ than you have ever imagined or thought possible. But I want to say this. It is so it is so real to say that it is possible that when you've been on the journey for a little while to grow a little bit tired and to settle back for the status quo. It's easy to do that, isn't it? Where our Christianity just becomes our normality. The things that we do become just a normality. The excitement of the possibilities begin to wane in our hearts. You see, a year of inactivity can actually create inactivity. I'll say that again. A year of inactivity that like we've had can actually create inactivity. If we're not careful, even the desire for church can become not as so exciting as it used to be. I've had conversations. I had a conversation yesterday with a pastor or retired pastor and he said this, that he, he had conversations with people who have said something like this, well, we're not going to go back to church. When, we, when it all opens up, we're not going to go back to church because we've discovered a different lifestyle now. We've discovered that we can just find God online. We can find God on God channels. So we, can, we can do all those. There's, there's no need to all get together. Inactivity can create inactivity. The most dynamic group of people in this world today, though we may not believe it, but it's true, is the church of Jesus Christ, living in and under the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Every person in Christ belongs in the body of Christ. Every person in Christ belongs in the family of God. We are uniquely in Christ 
And every joint, every part of the body of Christ supplies to the body that the work of Jesus is fulfilled. Hallelujah. Don't allow, if you're listening today, don't allow the enemy to try and convince you that life is now outside of this gathering together because it is in the gathering together, praise God, where the anointing and the power of God can begin to work in a glorious and mighty way. Hallelujah. I wanted to get that off my chest <laughs> because I've heard so much of people say, I'm going to go back, I'm going to go. The enemy doesn't need to work very hard sometimes. But you know what happened? Israel got to that place. They actually got to a place where, where they got tired of all the battles. They got tired of fighting the cause, put it that way. And when Joshua said this to them in Joshua chapter 18, we read this, that the land was now under Israeli control. The entire community of Israel gathered at Shiloh and set up the tabernacle. Everything was okay. The land was under their control. They had moved the tabernacle from Gilgal, which they set up when they went over the Jordan. And now they moved it closer to Jerusalem. It was almost saying like, well, this is, we're okay now. We've, we've done well, we're, we're fine. We've taken so much of what God wants us to take. But then Joshua said this, but there remain seven tribes who had not been allocated the grants of the land. They knew that the possession was theirs, but they hadn't yet got it. And Joshua said this to them, how long are you going to wait before you take possession of the remaining land that the Lord your God has given to you. How long are you going to wait before you take possession of what God has given to you? But they were saying, so we're comfortable, it's nice, it's lovely, it's fine. I'm happy where we are. We've set up the tabernacle. Everything is great now. We're happy with what we've got. Well, church, we can be in the same position. We can say, I'm, quite, I'm happy with what I've got. I'm happy with my experience. I'm happy. Yeah, but there's more to grasp. There's more to possess. There's more to take. There's more blessings to get hold of. Yeah, I know, Matt, I know. But you know, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm happy where I am. Can anybody remember Blamange? Remember Blamont? We used to have like a like a a, 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 a mole, like a rabbit. <laughs> Anyone else had a rabbit one? No. You made this Blamont, wouldn't you? And then it, it would, then it would be that flavour and that flavour and that flavour. But it always came out like a rabbit. And you know, sometimes I think that. You know, that, that life actually molds us into a particular shape. Life can mold you into a particular person. And we've all been molded by life. Our parents can mold us, our friends can mold us, our upbringing can mold us. Where we've been in life can mold us. And even though we might we may put different things in the mold, the different flavors of life. It always seems to come out exactly the same. I hear people say, you know, well, I'm, I'm me. So well, what, what, well, it's just me, I, I am me. I just, I've always been like this. What God is saying is, listen, don't settle for that, break the mold. Break the mold, because now you are a new creation in Christ. What you are right now in Jesus and what you want to become and he wants you to become 
isn't something that was. God is creating something powerful and mighty and new. Hallelujah. God is saying for each one of us today, listen, when you became a new creation, when you came into that new experience with God, the mold was broken, hallelujah. The old things have passed away. All new things are going to come. And so each one of us today, including myself here, that we've got to say, Lord, break the mold. Create in me, God, a clean heart. Create in me, God, what you want to create. Hallelujah. You see, the same question may be asked by us over and over equally that. How long will you wait before you begin to experience everything that God wants you to be? How long will you wait? Maybe you're listening today and you've never ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. How long will you wait before you possess what God wants to give you? And maybe you're here today and listening today and your soul feels very dry. It is a vibrating with the joy that you once had in Christ. How long will you wait before you go back to the river of God? How long will you wait before you pick up the calling and the ministry that God has given you to do? How long will you wait to rebuild a relationship that is broken? How long will you wait before you begin to say, Lord, I need to, I need to break off the chains, God, that held me? How long will you wait before those addictions are broken? How long will you wait before the sins are finally crucified in Christ? How long will you wait before you're filled with the Holy Spirit? How long will you wait before you seek God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit? Praise God that you could be used in ways beyond anything you could imagine. I include myself in this. How long will you wait before you share with your friends and family the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ? That's the question he asked. Because they were saying something like this, yeah, but, but Joshua, we're quite happy. We've gone so far, we're very happy. But Joshua, but how long will you wait before you take more? Take what God wants you to have. Hallelujah. I can see over each one of us the sense that God wants to, to anoint us with new oil and new wine. Hallelujah. To use us in ways beyond anything we could ever imagine through the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. I praise God, Steve, that Pentecost is coming around the corner, although it's actually here. And I pray on that day that many will be wonderfully filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to have the mold totally broken that they could be used. I believe, I still believe, I may be old fashioned, but I still believe that God has pastors and teachers and evangelists and pastors and prophets and, and apostles yet to be raised up from the body of Christ. Hallelujah. I believe for a day to come when there'll be far more of the spontaneous liberalization of the spirit actually working in the midst of the church and signs and wonders and miracles and healings and blessings that we can actually stand up and say, every spiritual blessing has been given to me, hallelujah, and given to us through Jesus Christ, hallelujah. It's never God's intention, and I say this with great respect to, to all of us, it was never God's intention ultimately to have just one person standing and, and speaking and the rest just listening. We're all partakers of the heavenly kingdom and partakers of the blessings of God. I, I love it. I love it when I see a, a young Christian have a word of knowledge. Praise God. I love it when, when someone says, can I pray with you? I love it when, when, when there are tongues and interpretation of tongues. I, I love it all. 
because it brings a liberalization in the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. We can settle. But the Lord is saying, how long will you wait? Praise God. Wonderful. Yeah. Just wait for a moment. Just wait for a moment. For indeed, saith the Lord, I am the Lord your God. I've called you out of bondage. I've called you out of brokenness. I've called you out of emptiness. I've called you out of loneliness and I've called you out of fear. For you are a light unto this world. You are a resource of living water, of living bread to this world. And I will have you, says the Lord, to, to rise up once more, to stand and to take the place that, where I have placed you in my victory in my anointing. I'll call you this day, saith the Lord, to become all that I call you to be. For this is the day, and this is the work, and in your midst I would have you know that you are mighty. For my anointing is upon this work. My anointing is upon this leadership. My anointing is upon this vessel. And what is before you, saith the Lord, is more than you could ever imagine or think possible. I will open your eyes to see beyond what you can see. I will open your ears to hear beyond what you can hear. And I will lead you in ways, saith the Lord, that will bring blessing and bring anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. Isn't it wonderful? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That word of praise his glorious name. See, you are, you're in Christ and you're deeply loved. You are the possession of his own heart. Praise God. You are no longer a slave. You are the God's child. You are alive because Christ dwells in you. So let it be your determination today that Satan will not rob you one more moment from all that God wants you to have in Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I just want to close a little bit because I know time is gone, but I was talking to a pastor this week and his eldership said to him, Steve, said, what's your vision? He said, they keep on asking me, what is my vision? And I say, my vision has always been the same. To see people saved, brought into the kingdom of God, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, and used to the glory of God. That's always been my vision. And he said to the leadership, the eldership, what you really mean is, what is my strategy? What is my strategy? And Joshua had a strategy for the people. He said, okay, send out some spies. Go and find out what's out there. Find out what's available. Praise God. And one of our strategies in the kingdom of God is, is, is not just to hear the word, but to actually get before God and say, Jesus, praise you, Lord. What is the next step that you want me to take? What is the next step, God? What is the next revelation that you want me to, to enter into? Be determined to discover all that God has for you individually. And I'll tell you this right now, when the Holy Spirit speaks and reveals something to you, there'll be a big part of you which will go, whoa, 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 what, what me, God? I was 19 years old. I was the most quiet, shy, individual, fearful people you could imagine at that age. I would sneak into the church where I was at and I would sit on the back row. I wouldn't speak to anybody. 
If somebody said, Matt, can you do something? I would say, no, thank you very much. I'm, I'm going home. That was me, 19 years old. And in one meeting, God spoke to me almost. It wasn't audibly, but it was. He said, my son, I'm calling you to preach. How about you joking? <laughs> no, no, God, that. Well, praise God. But I took a step of faith. I want to tell you right now, it was in, it was in fear and in trembling. The first time I ever preached, I had rivers of living water, not flowing over me, flowing out of me. Every step is a step of faith, and every step is... You're pushing back. You're pushing back. Be determined. Don't live in your history. Paul said this to the church of Philippi. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind, I press on now into all that God has for me. Praise God. And I finish with this thought. A few years ago, Marion and I were near Fort William in Scotland. And uh, we saw a little sign, I think it was something like Neptune Staircase. And I thought, what was that about? So we went over and had a look. And what it was, it was a series of locks that took boats from one level to a higher level. Quite a few locks. And they would come in and the water would fill up and then they would go up again. And that, the process all the way through. And God spoke to me. And Hear my heart. God said this. You will never reach your destiny until you close some of the doors behind you. The only way they could go up was to shut the doors behind them. And you know the enemy would want to hold you back there. But the Holy Spirit will say, I want to take you higher, higher, and higher. And so the children of Israel finally went and began. The truth is this, they've never, ever, ever yet taken the whole land of what God gave them originally. I pray today that every single one of us, it may be just the beginning of something fresh how long will you wait before you get back into a, a prayer time with god how long will you wait before you get back to reading the word of god i just pray that the holy spirit this morning may just put something on your heart and to actually say to you this is your next step to take hold of everything i want to give you Thank you for listening. Thank you, Steve, for your invite. It's a joy and a privilege always to come here and to share God's word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, I thank you and I praise you. Lord Jesus, magnify your name. Lord, I want to thank you for every person here. I want to thank you for every person listening on Zoom. I want to thank you, Lord, for every person listening to this podcast if you like later on during the week father i want to thank you for every life i want to thank you lord that everyone is precious to you i want to thank you god that everyone you you love them you love them lord in ways beyond anything i can even begin to speak about and lord you've taken us out of the dirt you've taken us out of the miry clay you've taken us out of lord that which was nothing and lord you set our feet upon a rock hallelujah jesus and Lord, I praise you and I thank you. But Lord, we're on this journey. This church is on a journey. Lord, around us, there are thousands of people who do not even know you. And Lord, I pray today, Father, for a fresh anointing of your power and, and the Holy Spirit upon every single life. Father, I pray for a day when we will begin to witness beyond anything we could ever imagine or think possible through the work of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for a day 
when we will begin to see miracles and signs and wonders. Hallelujah. I pray for a day, Father, when thousands of souls will be brought into the kingdom of God. And Lord, I praise you and thank you. It begins with every single one of us taking our place in the family of God. Lord, it begins today with each one of us answering the question, how long will you wait before? And Lord, whatever that end bit is, Father, I pray today that we will be strong enough and willing enough, Lord, to, to answer that and to move from this day, Lord, to our new day. And Father, I praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.